Homeland Security Bill is ratified. After eight years, British borders will remain closed. The deportation of illegal immigrants will continue. Good morning. Our lead story. The world was stunned today by the death of Diego Ricardo, the youngest person on the planet. Baby Diego was stabbed outside a bar in Buenos Aires. Look, after refusing there we are. The first shot of Alfonso Cuaron's Children of Men is a shot of an audience getting information about the state of things in the same way that we do through the media. You may have missed it, but Cuaron's fundamental motif of contrasting foreground and background has already been established through the media before this shot even begins. Let's back up a little. deportation of illegal immigrants will continue. Good morning, our lead story. Like everyone else, the media prioritizes information based on its values. So much attention is paid to the foreground, to the lead story, that the background can go by without much notice. The lead story of Children of Men is the story of Theo. In a future world nearing its end because women have lost the ability to have children, Theo, an apathetic government bureaucrat, returns to his roots as a political activist after he sees that there is still hope left for humanity. The film plays as an exciting action thriller as Leo helps the pregnant Key get to safety with the human project. But as the plot moves along its linear path following Theo, the camera repeatedly becomes preoccupied with what's going on in the background. And this is a technique that Quaran has used in the past, and it makes for an interesting effect. As in thousands of other films, we experience the world through the eyes of the main character. This process of identification is automatic and strong, so strong that we can even be made to sympathize with people who we would otherwise identify as bad or evil. So when the camera actively breaks that identification and shows us imagery the lead character doesn't see or notice, we're made forcefully aware in a purely visual way of the perspective of the film itself. In Children of Men, that perspective is absorbed by the background, by a bleak, gray winter Britain, the only country in the world still under stable government control. This background, seen always at a sidelong angle, probes and investigates the conditions of that stability and whether or not it's worth what's sacrificed to have it. Though it's dressed up with a few futuristic flourishes, the world Quaran presents to us is a reflection of our own. The grim combination of nationalistic, xenophobic politics and late capitalist consumerism isn't something that we have to imagine. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. In 2006, when this film was made, only five years after 9-11 and at the height of the war on terror, this was, and in many ways still is, the state of things. Thousands of migrants and refugees in the war-torn Middle East and Africa, a rude awakening awaits in countries that are moving to close their doors. And there's another background, too, a figurative background of cultural reference. For example, when Key first reveals her pregnancy, she stands in a posture reminiscent of Botticelli's Birth of Venus, one of the many references in this film to maternity. Jasper and Miriam both recite, shanty, shanty, shanty. recalling both the Upanishads and T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, which is a major source of inspiration for an infertile world that's lost its way. Outside Theo's cousin's Ark of Arts, a pig floats above the old Battersea Power Station, an overt reference to Pink Floyd's album Animals, a concept album loosely based on George Orwell's Animal Farm, itself a satirical indictment of authoritarian socialism or Stalinism. Indeed, there's a lot included in the Ark of Arts scene. Here's a Banksy. Here's Michelangelo's David, Picasso's Guernica, significantly framing Theo in the realities of war. And underneath it all plays King Crimson's progressive rock anthem to the court of the Crimson King, blending the sacred and the profane. But Quaran's referencing becomes more potent as the intertexts layer and connect. Take this shot here. It utilizes nearly all the techniques I've mentioned so far. You have the lead story moving again toward its destination at the sea, but the camera leaves them for a moment to focus on this mother cradling her dead son. 
The most immediate citation here is to Michelangelo's famous sculpture, La Pieta, which Nigel mentions earlier in the film. Couldn't save La Pieta. Smashed up before we got there. In that sculpture, Mary holds the crucified Jesus in her arms, questioning the cruelty of men. The image also evokes Guernica, also shown earlier in the film, a much more modern meditation on the horrors of war. And Quaran has said in interviews that the inspiration for this image came from a photograph out of the Balkan Wars, itself a reference to Michelangelo's work. Whereas the Ark of Arts shows art extracted and placed in an ivory tower, Quaran puts art back on the ground where it belongs and brings it alive within a number of contexts, ancient and current, and most importantly, as a background for the main story. There's an absurd paradox that sits at the center of our modern world. While capital itself knows no borders, people and nations struggling to find their identities have sought repeatedly to tighten their borders and restrict peoples from crossing them. What's more, these refugees are increasingly displaced by the militaristic meddling of neoconservative regimes and the worsening climate, a result of the unchecked expansion of capitalist enterprises. In Children of Men, as in our own world, all of these things are intimately connected. And yet for each of us individually, it's hard to see anything but the foreground, the lead story. That's why the roving, curious preoccupations of Quran's camera are more than just asides. By providing a disinterested break from identification, they achieve something we just can't in our own lives. They let us see the world bare, naked, stripped for a moment of subjectivity. This is the radical political potential of cinema. We can all keep to our main stories if we want, live in our little worlds. But sooner or later, the background is going to come for all of us. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I just got some awesome Nerd Writer stickers delivered that are now available on my Patreon page. You can get them by clicking right in the middle of the screen right here or in the description. They are two stickers for $3, one payment, boom, you get them set. Obviously, I hope you continue to pledge after that. They're awesome for laptops and backpacks and lunchboxes, whatever you put stickers on. Um, they're available now on my Patreon page and a Patreon is what keeps the Nerd Writer alive and going and the big goal is to get that Patreon to $1,000 per video. So thank you so much for helping me get there uh, and making this possible. This content is for you guys. See you next Wednesday.